Merlin is a wealthy bachelor. At a party, he meets Chloe, and the two fall in love. But an illness plagues Chloe, so Colin tries to figure out an imaginative cure in Mood Indigo. Hi, I'm Brenna here with Sean and Liz to talk about the new French film, Mood Indigo. We've all just seen it. Liz, how about you start us off? I love this movie, and what I love most about it is it reminded me of what I wanted a movie to be when I was, like, eight. It's like everything goes crazy in this movie, and it brings... I mean, the story is bringing back the fun in technology and the fun in tasks, and it brings a lot of imagination to the story. And though the actual storyline of the film is pretty simple and and predictable everything around it is exciting you mean non-existent yeah <laughs> it's, 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 it's it's beautiful it is extremely beautiful it's, all beautiful. it's really uh, entertaining they had the stop motion all this a lot of technical prowess is on the screen but at the expense of everything else yeah. the story is is but nothing minimized. suffers no, it, it, the story should have been emotionally hard hitting it's a very emotional story yes. and a, a rather poignant one that for americans of somebody going Broke, dealing with healthcare costs, among other things, and then in that we also have these this amazing cast that we kind of don't really pay attention to because we have all of this other fancy stuff going yeah. on. Well, this is Michelle Gondry who made Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind, great movie, but uh, this is a triumph of visual design, and I do think it's at the expense of of everything else. Uh, I think that the movie really suffers as a narrative because the visual design does not aid a narrative; it aids itself. It basically just exists to be pretty pictures in a world, and it, it feels like Michelle Gondry started as a music video director. It feels like one long music video. It doesn't have any sense of itself other than its visual images. I, mean, I see that point of view. Like, I'm not I'm not an idiot. I see that it's a very silly, vapid story. But for me, when I'm watching it, and I see the inventiveness of the production design, the set decor, and I see the effort that was put into the look of the film, for some reason, it transferred over to the characters as well. It brought me into the story even more, being immersed in this world, in this very exciting world. So something worked for me. I loved the visual effects. Yes. I, I was extremely entertained by them, but I don't feel that they should be used at the expense of the story, of the characters, because the story, I don't think it was vapid. I think it's a very deep emotional story that is, it, it's falling in love and then dealing with loss. Mm. It's, and, and we but have- the way it was treated in the film. The way it's was treated was, was sort of like, it's, oh yeah, it's, it's happening, but look at what this chicken on this plate does. <laughs> Because in addition to this story, we have an amazing cast. We have Audrey Tattoo and Romain Dury. And they are incredible here. For me, as, in, as fun and imaginative as all the special effects was, I was much more intrigued watching them try to hide their fear from each other. Watching them, it does, but not even, didn't really get to see them develop the relationship, but seeing them try and hide the fear of loss, of being sick, of not knowing how to handle the situation from each other. See, the film becomes serious, but the way it tackles that uh, that element of the story doesn't feel serious. I mean, they go and they... It, they're not, we're not talking about a real disease. She gets a water lily in her lungs. I don't want to go too much into it to give away the story. Yeah. But it's like, that's not a, a serious way of dealing with that issue. That's a comical way of dealing with but that issue. But this is all, about, this is all about a serious. character who doesn't want to get serious. I mean, there's even a point in the movie where the character interferes with the storytelling and tries to retell the story and tries to make it a happy story. What's sad about the story for me is that the character and the film avoid that emotion so much and it brings me into the world even more so because I feel like this character's in denial the story's in denial of the real drama and that was impactful for me the denial of the film I think if you try and compare it to somebody who's American, this is French, so it's like, are we lost in translation a little bit? But you look at uh, somebody like Tim Burton, where Tim Burton has made exceptional movies just like Michelle Gondry has, but he has been criticized for having basically triumphed uh, triumphed in the production design elements and lacked what we really want in a movie, which is the characters in the story. And I think that's the case here with Michel Gondry. He's essentially created a mood 
like the title suggests, and he hasn't created a story, and that's not compelling for me. I just think there's something more going on here. I mean, to compare it to Tim Burton, Tim Burton, I do agree, is all surface, as of late especially, but this film... It's trying something different. It's trying to get to your emotions in a completely different way, and I, I appreciate that about it. Michel Gondry may have let his visual flourishes overshadow an incredible cast and what could have been a deeply emotional story, but it's still worth a watch. I say stream it. This film will put you in the right mood if you can take a large helping of visual design without a side of story. Stream it. Mood Indigo is exciting, inspiring, and poignant. See it. All right, well, our votes add up to two tickets, which is a stream it for Mood Indigo. Cheers. Salud. No, oh, Michelle Gondry. Let's hope they make Mood red, orange, yellow, green, blue. Two streamers. Two streamers. Okay, give me just two, a second. Two streamers. Ah, 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 ah.